Hi everyone, my name's Susan and I'm with the YEP project in Perth, Western Australia. I'm heading to SHQ today to get an STI test. I haven't made an appointment but I've checked online and their drop-in service is running at the moment so I'm going to head in now and just see how we go. I'm just about to arrive at Perth Station. SHQ is just a short walk away down Rose Street. Really easy. Hello, how can I help you today? I'm here for the drop-in clinic. Sure, have you been here before? No. Okay. I just need you to fill in this paperwork yep. and bring it back to me with your Medicare card. Mm -hmm. This is your number, so when they call you in, it goes in this box. Great. Okay, thank thanks. You. Getting tested for STIs is a really important part of taking care of my health. When I know if I have an STI or not, it means I can get treatment if I need it and I can make sure I don't pass it on to anyone else. You can't always tell if you have an STI or not just by looking, so testing is the only way to be completely sure. Um, hi Susan, my name's Rochelle, I'm one of the doctors. Hi, here. nice to meet you. So how can I help you today? Uh, I'm here to get an STI test. Okay, great. Good uh, work for coming in. Um, we uh, usually just start with a few general questions about your health. Would that be okay with you? Sure. Uh, are you allergic to It makes it all a bit easier as long as I know what medications and past medical history you're on, so sure. I'll take it from there. Great. Now, generally, I just ask, um, and we ask everyone the same sort of questions, uh, a little bit about your sexual history. So uh, don't feel uncomfortable, but if you do at any time, just let me know. Okay? okay. So do you have any symptoms at the moment that you're worried about? No. Uh, most STIs are probably, or sexually transmitted infections, are completely asymptomatic, meaning they mm. don't cause any symptoms at all. Uh, but some people experience symptoms like funny vaginal discharge, a funny smell, pain in the pelvis, mm. irregular periods, bleeding after intercourse. Have you experienced any of those at all? No, I haven't. Great. Okay, and we, we generally now move on just to some general questions about uh, your, your sexual preferences, sexual partners, and the reason that we do that is so that we know what your risk is, mm -hmm. what swabs to take and what tests to organise for you. Sure. Okay. In the last six months, how many people have you had sex with? Uh, four. Okay. And do you have regular sexual partners and casual sexual partners or were they all casual encounters? Um, yeah, all casual. All casual mm -hmm. encounters, yeah. And um, when you have sex, do you have sex with males, females, transgender people? Uh, men and women. Men and women. Mm -hmm. Right. And when you la when did you last have sex with a, a regular partner? Uh, a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And it, have you had sex with anyone else since then? No. No. So it was about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you have sex, do you have vaginal sex? Yes. Yep. Um, oral uh, sex giving and receiving. Yes. Yep. And anal sex giving, uh, receiving rather. <laughs> uh, I have. You have. Yeah. Okay. And how often do you use condoms? Most of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Most of the time. I, I've forgotten a couple of times. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. I mean, that's um, you know realistic. I mean, obviously condoms are the best thing to prevent getting sexually transmitted infections. Yeah. Uh, but certainly we can um, do some testing for you today to make sure that that's not not the case. Okay. So do you mind if I ask when your last menstrual period was? Um. A couple of weeks ago. And was it a normal period then? Yeah. Okay, so you, um, there's no chance that you could be pregnant at the moment, you don't think? I guess not. No, okay. <laughs> so if you had a normal period two weeks ago, then that's pretty pretty good. Um, are you using any form of contraception other than condoms at the moment? 
Yeah. No. Okay, so after we've done all the STI testing, maybe when we bring you back we can talk a little bit about your contraceptive options and I can sure. give you some information because it's a good opportunity to sort of start thinking about well, what if the condom breaks or mm. what if um, you know you get pregnant and you're not quite ready to get pregnant. So we can talk about some of your contraceptive options a little bit later as well. Great, okay. All right. Uh, have you ever injected drugs at all? No. no. And do you have any um, tattoos or piercings which were done elsewhere? No. As in not in Australia? Or no, in, in Australia. In Australia, yeah. yeah. And um, have you ever had a blood transfusion or a transplant? No. no. And um, do you know if you've been immunised against hepatitis A or hepatitis B? Maybe. Maybe. I don't yeah, know. That's okay. Yeah. Did you have all your childhood vaccinations? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you so. possibly have been immunised against hepatitis B, but we can check. Okay. We can check that. And um, have you? Did you have the cervical cancer, the HPV vaccination? Yeah. That's good. Well, that's you did. You're right. Great. Yeah. Excellent. And when was the last time you had a, um, an STI test or a bloodborne virus test? Uh, six months ago. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. And was that all normal? Yes. Yeah. Have you ever had an STI in the past? Like maybe you've got a rear? No, I haven't. No. Mm -hmm. How old are you now? 23. 23. Okay, so we've got a new cervical screening test now, which is not the pap smear. So we recommend that that begins your cervical screening at about 25. So you've still got a few more years okay. yet, but I can give you some information about that. Yeah. Uh, so we're moving towards a test looking at human papilloma virus rather than just looking for the cells. But we, mm -hmm. we're commencing that at 25 for most women. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, now, um, I guess for you, there, there are a few STIs or sexually transmitted infections that you possibly may have been exposed to. Okay. Um, sexually transmitted infections are quite common, mm. uh, and um, the most common one at the moment uh, in young people is chlamydia. Yeah. Uh, gonorrhea is on the rise in Perth, so unfortunately that is also a risk, okay. but both of those, if detected, are quite easily treated with antibiotics, okay. uh, which is the good news. Mm. Okay. Uh, there are several bloodborne virus tests that we can offer you today, and we mm. can check for things like HIV, and we can also check for syphilis, and if you like, I can check your immunity to hepatitis B and A as well, okay. so that if okay. you're not immune, we can then offer you, uh, we can offer you some immunisation as well. Yeah. Great. Um, now, um, the thing about any testing is that we need to um, appreciate your honesty about the sites. We just need to know exactly where to test from. Mm. So for you, I would probably recommend a throat swab mm -hmm. so that we can make sure there's no infection in the throat. Yeah. A vaginal swab, which you can take yourself. I don't need to touch you. I don't need to examine you. You can do that. Okay. And the same with an anal swab. So you can do that yourself. In fact, you can do all of them yourself if Great. you'd like to so okay. that um, you don't have to be, you know, in front of me doing it, you can just go to the bathroom and do that yourself. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, sometimes people prefer me to do the throat swab because they don't like the gag reflex, but mm. I just leave it up to the person okay. themselves yeah. so I can show I'll you. I'll give it a go. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, the other tests that we organise are um, the bloodborne virus tests. So we've yeah. got a, um, a phlebotomist down the hall who can do those tests for you. Okay. Basically, what we um, do is we put a cuff around your arm, we take some blood tests. It's only one needle and um, and we just get a, a one tube out mm -hmm. and we can check on that blood test, test for things like HIV, syphilis mm -hmm. and um, your immunity or not to hepatitis A and B as well. Sure. Okay. Okay. With any STI testing, there are a few things legally I just need to run through with you. Sure. Okay. Okay. With, um, gonorrhea and, the, and chlamydia, because your last intercourse was a couple of weeks ago, these tests should be fairly accurate at picking those up. Okay. With syphilis and HIV, there's something called a window period, mm -hmm. which means that it takes up to about three months for the virus to appear in the blood if you've been exposed and infected with that virus. Okay. And so it will be accurate for any sex you had more than three months ago, mm -hmm. but what we would recommend for you, because you've had sex more recently, just the last couple of weeks, that we repeat the tests again in three months' time. Okay. And obviously the important thing in that window period is to ensure that you continue to use condoms regular okay. um, So in terms of your risk, you're, you're at fairly low risk for um, for the bloodborne viruses. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately with chlamydia and gonorrhea they are high, higher prevalence but you haven't got any symptoms so we can just do the swabs and see how things um, turn out. Great. Okay. Okay. And so I'm going to give you three and I'll label them each for you. Mm -hmm. So basically for the throat swab, 
I might do it on myself, but I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, open your mouth up and put it right at the back. So um, mm -hmm. a lot of people just say, oh, you do it, doctor. Yeah. yeah. Quite often do that. And, ah, the back and then bit. right at the back of right. the throat. Okay. Get a rub and then stick it in. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. the vaginal swab, you pull it out, you basically put it in the vagina just about to there. Yeah. Okay, squiggle it around, hold it there for about 10 seconds, mm -hmm. and then put it back inside the tube. Okay. okay. And then with the rectal swab, and there are instructions in the bathroom if you forget anything. Sure. <laughs> With the rectal swab, you can just wet the tip a little bit to make it more uh, comfortable for you. Mm -hmm. And basically just put it slightly in uh, where it's comfortable, hold it there uh, for about 10 seconds and then put it back in there. Yeah. So wet the tip? You can wet the tip. With water? With water. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just if it makes it more comfortable. Some people oh, are like, okay. oh, I'm not sticking mine anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Just if that makes it a little bit more comfortable. Sure. For you. Okay. Right. So what I might do is give you all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. You can go to the bathroom, get it all done, and then come back here and we can talk about uh, any questions that you might have about contraception mm -hmm. and talk about how to get your results and things as well. Sure. Have you got any questions at the moment? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay, okay. great. Well, I'll give you a chance to go and think about them uh -huh. and I'll give you your swabs now. Check it out! They've even got an instruction card to make sure that I do it correctly. Okay, you better go, I need some privacy. Cool. Thanks, Susan. So that was um, pretty simple and you've had your test, your blood test done as well? Yeah. Yeah, great. Okay, Susan, um, I guess now what we just need to talk about a little bit is um, how you want to get your results mm -hmm. and perhaps when we might get your results as well. Okay, yeah. So generally we ask you how you want your results. So some mm. people prefer email, some people if their results are all normal prefer a text message yeah. and then we just say to them, uh, look we'll text you if everything's normal mm. uh, but we might text to say phone this number if there's any issue that we'd like to discuss with you about the results. That's and then I can make another appointment. And then you can make another appointment. Okay. Yeah. Great. Or we'll make one for you with you on the phone so that yeah. we can get you in quickly. Okay. Uh, so it's text or email or um, or letter or phone call, so it's completely up to you how you'd like to get it done. So how would you like your results? Text is fine. Text is fine, yeah. good. Usually the results come back within a week. Sometimes it can take up to two weeks. I just warn people just in case they're worried. So yeah. if it hasn't happened by two weeks that you haven't received a text, mm -hmm. please give us a call. Okay. And if you're particularly worried or anxious before that, give us a call and we'll just see if the results have come back a bit earlier than expected. Okay. Okay. We've been through a lot of information today and I don't want to overload you. Mm -hmm. Have you thought a little bit about whether or not you want me to discuss some contraceptive methods with you other than condoms? Uh, can I take the information away with me? Yeah, of course. So what I might do is yeah. I'll give you some stuff. There's lots of different things now and it's not all just the contraceptive pill. There's things like long-acting mm -hmm. reversible methods, like mm -hmm. there's a, um, an implant which lasts for three years, there are injections which last for three months, mm -hmm. and there are intrauterine devices which last between five and ten years. Yeah. So you can think of um, what might suit you and your lifestyle best, and I've just given you some information here about all the different options. Okay. So go away and think about it, and if you'd like to have a further discussion with one of the doctors or nurses here, we'd always be happy to see you. you just remember okay. to make an appointment at the front desk. Okay. So have you got any other questions at all, Susan? So I'm just wondering how often I should be getting tested, or like when, when's a good time? It really depends on your level of risk. So what, you know, we recommend all young people get tested at least once a year. Mm -hmm. uh, for men who have sex with men, or people who are having sex with multiple partners more frequently without condoms, we can re recommend testing a bit more frequently, frequently, mm -hmm. like every three months or so. Generally for you now, because we've just done these tests and we've got the window period to consider, mm. I would recommend you come back in three months' time yeah. and then we make a decision as to further testing based on your risk. Yeah, okay, yeah. great. Um, I noticed that I didn't have to pee in a cup. Yeah. This time. <laughs> yeah, I, the, the guidelines from the Australian Sexual Health Network have sort of come out and said that actually a vaginal swab for asymptomatic women or women with no problems that they're aware of mm. is more accurate than the urine sample. And oh. so the, the times that we might order a urine sample are for whatever reason we can't get a vaginal sample off you or that you feel uncomfortable doing that, then a urine sample can be used. Uh, but for men, they usually do a first pass urine, so they're the ones that we still get to pee in the cup. Okay, okay, yeah. great. <laughs> Any other questions at all? No, I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank lovely you to meet you. so much for your help today. No problem. It's great. It's lovely to meet you. All done? Yeah. 
What's your first name? Susan. It's just $10 today, thanks. Okay. Is that cash or card? Cash. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Well done. All right, see ya. So that was it. It was super easy to get here. I got to do the test myself. The staff were really friendly and they knew so much. Um, and I'll have my results back in about a week. It can be really daunting to get tested, but all it takes is to find the time to come in. You can get tested at any GP or right here at SHQ. Happy testing!